we keep talking about the 5G and uh, there's a lot of uh, articles and uh, uh, you know some uh, misinformation out there that like you know 5G is going to create uh, radiation. But uh, the good uh, good thing about 5G is that it it does create pencil beams. And not just 5G, but you know I mean in general in a smart city environment, when you think about uh, you know connected cars or you think about uh, uh, sensors. Um, a lot of sensors, just think about it, right? They are, uh, for example, the smart metering sensor, right? The smart metering sensor is typically is a, a 100 microwatts to 100 milliwatt sensor. So that's the amount of power that it consumes. And it is typically battery operated. And it is going to be really difficult for you to go and charge those sensors for smart IoT. So why not use the energy that is present in the environment? And there are many different forms of energy that are present in the environment. Like one of the energy sources is, uh, of course, solar power. Uh, the other one is wind, as uh, uh, Randy mentioned. But say, for example, there's a smart IoT meter. You can't really put a solar power or uh, uh, you know wind, but you can have a capacitor, a simple capacitor, that can continuously be uh, harvesting energy from the environment itself. And you know this this type of vision was actually uh, uh, created by Nikola Tesla himself, where he showed that you can actually uh, do the, the power transfer over the wire. And in fact, you have all these new devices which have come about where you can take the phone and then put it on a, a, you know, on a panel, which does the electric charging of the phone, right? So that has been shown that you can do it over five millimeter, millimeters. So very short distances, a near field. But what has not been shown so far is that how you can expand it expand the coverage. So new companies are coming in, which are trying to figure out whether we can actually do the power transfer, uh, especially using directed energy, right, over a longer distance. So I think this is going to be a very interesting field because, you know, just think about it, that I have thousands of sensors deployed in the field. And, you know, just you, you don't want uh, your national grid person to be going and figuring out what's the reading on the meter, because that's why you deploy the sensor. But now you don't want your national grid person to go out and figure out how much battery is left in every sensor or any, every sensor device, right? So if the device itself can like, you know, use a very low, uh, you know, small electromechanical device like a, a capacitor and charge itself and use rechargeable batteries, then you can have a sensor that can be uh, out there for 20, 30 years without you, uh, uh, you know, having to go and uh, service it. So oh, wow. okay. these are the new technologies that I think are going to make a lot of difference.